Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. This is step seven in the construction of the X-15. We're going to start putting together the ejection baffle. Now the purpose of this is to protect the parachute from the ejection charge of the rocket motor. Um, it consists of a coupler and two bulkhead discs and a doubler disc to give this disc some extra strength. Like the other laser cut stuff, there's these little tick marks. Um, you can just cut through them. It's a little harder on the plywood. Um, but if you, if you cut through them, it makes it a little easier to take them out. You can also just punch them out. And they're going to have little nubs on them, and then you'll just have to sand those off. On the doubler, you don't really have to worry about it because it's not really used for anything. Sometimes they're a little easier to see on the back side. Okay, and you want to remove all these little circles, and you can discard those. They aren't used for anything. And you'll also want to punch out the little holes in the middles here. And in the doubler disc as well. We're going to take this double di doubler disc and we're going to glue it onto the hole there like that. Um, and you'll notice that these have wood grain. So this one, the wood grain, runs this way. And on this one, it runs this way. Um, just for extra strength, you want those to crisscross. So you want these perpendicular to each other. It gives a little bit of extra strength. You want to clear out that hole um, so that you can make sure that they're lining up. What I usually do is I'll take a piece of paper towel, just kind of roll it up like this, and that will allow you to get the glue out of there so you can see that those two holes are lined up. And like that. Okay, so then we're going to set this aside to dry, and this has to be. 100% dry before you put this uh, screw eye in or it'll just pop that doubler right off. So go ahead and just set this aside to dry and then when we come back um, this will be dry. The glue is now dry on our bulkhead with the doubler disc on there. Uh, we're going to take our screw eye and we're going to screw this in. I'm going to do opposite side of that doubler and I don't want to go in past the threads. So as you're twisting this in, keep it in the threads because that's where it's really strong. I can feel it because it's tight. <laughs> okay, let me go a little bit further. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. Both sides. Okay, just like that. And now this gets, um, we're going to set this aside for right now. This first disc right here, this is going to be glued approximately in the middle of, the, of this coupler. So you'll slide it in and somewhere right in there is the middle. If you want to mark it, you can uh, just kind of squeeze it with your fingers to keep it from moving around. Just run a pencil line in there um, so you know where to put the glue. Okay, 
going to give it a squeeze. Okay, so you can see that one. And then we want to put a fillet of glue on this side as well. It's going to want to move around on you until this glue starts to thicken up a little bit as it evaporates. So just work carefully. Don't, don't push too hard. Okay, so I got that in there. And then this other disc, doesn't matter which side it goes on, um, it's going to get glued right in the front of there. And I want you to recess it just a little bit so that there's a little edge right there so that we can put a fillet of glue around there because this is where the shock core is going to be attached and we want that strong. So we want a fillet of glue on, on this side of the bulkhead. Uh, the first put a glue glue around the outside smear it around make it nice and even okay so I'm going to slide this in and as I'm sliding it in I'm going to push all that glue in front of it just like that so I'm just I'm recessed just a little bit and it pushed all that glue in there so on the back side which we can't see now um, there's a little bit of a fillet there so then I'm going to come back here and put a fillet of glue right where, where it touches the outside edge so kind of squeeze it as you go around again to make sure that it doesn't move on you And if you want to clean out these slots, that's actually a good idea. I'm going to just take a dowel, just try to clean them out as, as best I can. And the reason for this is there's going to be residue from the ejection charge and it's going to go through these holes and it's going to get caught behind that disc. Um, and so to get that residue out, we can shake it and, and go around in a circle like this to get the residue to fall out. And that's why these holes are on the outside so that it makes it easier to fall out. But if there's glue in there, it kind of creates a little ridge, like a speed bump for those, for any residue to fall out. So by cleaning it out, um, we can make that residue fall out a little bit easier. And that's the whole purpose of this. It's not that it's gonna do anything, make it stronger or weaker or anything. It's just to make it clean up easier between flights. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside to dry fully um, before we glue it into the body tube itself. In this step, we're going to glue the baffle into the tubes and assemble everything together. Uh, but before you do that, we need to attach the shock cords to the baffle. Uh, there's two shock cords. There's a rubber and a Kevlar. Each of them gets attached to this screw eye here on the top of the baffle. Um, so, I'm going to take one end on each and tie it into a knot. The, the uh, Kevlar is the most important one. Um, it's really going to keep everything together. The elastic one takes up the energy to try to prevent, you know, zippered tubes. Um, but this one has to stay attached because if the problem with elastic is over time it's going to degrade where the Kevlar is going to be strong forever. Um, so we want to keep this knot from coming undone uh, because this is going to be permanently in the rocket. This might be need to be replaced someday in the future. Um, I don't know when that will be on your rocket, but it might happen. So let me get a paper towel. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this knot just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Just a little bit, rub it in, and then tie this one on here as well. If 
If you want to put glue on this one, it's fine. Um, it's not going to hurt. Just make sure it's uh, wood glue or, or white glue, not CA glue or epoxy, because that's going to stiffen up this elastic and prevent it from stretching, and then it's just going to break right there. It's going to make it, make it loose. But you do want to make it tight like that. Okay. Now this will be glued into the front end. That's the back end. This is the front end of the longer tube. Um, you'll notice here on the tube, we have a square box near the motor side. Um, and that is where the launch lug is going to go. And on this tube, there's also one of those square boxes. And this is the other launch lug. So when we glue them together, those two lines need to match up. That's the important thing. Um, okay, so now this one here, we're going to glue into this tube first. And we need to glue it about halfway into the tube. So take your pencil and mark the halfway point. And it's not absolutely important that it be exactly halfway. Um, so you can eyeball it. It's, and we're going to glue it there like that. So we're going to put some glue on here. Have a paper towel handy because as you put it in, it's going to ooze out. Now keep rotating it, keep it moving or it's going to grab too early. Um, that's the one thing people complain about when they're gluing couplers or tubes together is sometimes it grabs too fast and it locks in position and then bad things can happen. Um, not so much on this end, but when you're gluing the second one in, you know, if it stops halfway up, you're in trouble. If you are unsure whether you can put it in all the way, use epoxy. Use a, like a liquid epoxy, maybe like a five minute epoxy, because the epoxy takes so long to dry. Um, you have a lot of time and epoxy kind of lubricates it so you can slide it together easily. So you can use epoxy, just make sure you know you keep it off of this elastic shock cord. So I'm going to take all of this shock cord and I'm going to shove it into the tube. I'm going to shove it into the end that has the square for the launch lug because this is the back end. Should have two there it is. This end is caught. There we go. Okay, so all this comes out the front. Um, and then we're going to glue them together. And remember, it's going to get glued with the launch lug line. Now there's two lines that come all the way up to the top of this tube. That's the launch lug line. And then on the other side is the top line. And you can barely see it, but it's etched on here. T-O-P for top. So this is the top side of the rocket. And this one also has a line that goes all the way to the front end of the tube. Um, so when we glue it together, we want these two lines to line up right here. Just like that. So here's our launch lug. And it lines up right there. Okay. So, um, that's so which end should I put it on first? It doesn't matter. Now when you do this one, um, use a little bit of extra glue. The only problem with using extra glue is that you can get it on your shock cords, but it's not going to affect the elastic one because it's just going to stretch and the, and the glue is going to break and it's going to just, it's not going to be a problem. But, and even on the Kevlar, it's not going to be a problem. Um, it's a problem if it's, an, it's epoxy, so keep the epoxy. So um, if you're using epoxy, just use it sparingly. Put most of it on this end over here. But because this is um, yellow glue, um, I need to use a little bit extra because what's happening is the water is going into the paper and it's um, thickening up the glue, and that's when you can have it 
kind of seize up on you. So before I put them together, I want to get my lines kind of close. So I, I'm just going to go straight on on this one. Okay, so you just go. Okay. Okay, push them together real good. And you can see glue's out again. I'm just going to wipe that off. I thought I had a dowel here. Um, but if you look on the inside, there's going to be some glue oozing in there. And I don't have my dowel, so I'm going to pause here just like real quick and get a dowel so I can scrape that glue out of there. Uh, because as we said before, we want to keep those holes clear and keep along the edges um, so that if there's any residue in the baffle, we can just pour it out and it's not acting like a little speed bump preventing it from popping out. So I'm going to just put it upside down so that's kind of oozing out this way while I pause and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my dowel and now I'm just going to scrape around on the inside and clean up any excess glue. Now you probably can't see this because it's way down in the in the tube, but you can see I'm picking up glue and I want to get it all off from the inside of there, particularly around those holes where the baffle is. Okay, not too bad. So you got a little bit of glue here on the elastic, and I just wipe that off. It's not going to be a problem. I could have left it on there. Uh, wood glue and the elastic doesn't affect it. Okay, so I like that. So I'm going to let that dry. Um, all this excess shock cord, it kind of gets in the way. So what I usually do is take a paper towel like this, and I'll just wad this up. for right now, and I'm going to shove it inside. Oh, before I do that, uh, the other end here, um, there's a D-link, or sometimes called a quick link. Um, we're going to tie this end of the elastic to this, and eventually this is going to be hooked onto the nose cone. You can unscrew this, and you can put it over the loop on the nose cone. So I'm just going to tie this on here right now so that I don't forget uh, I just don't want to lose it while I'm finishing the rest of the rocket. Okay, make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to take all of this and shove it in here like this. And then just take the paper towel, just wad it up, just stuff it in. That way, you know, it's, everything's not falling out on you. Okay, so again, make sure that that line lines up here. On the other side, the top line, I want to take that line and extend it up to the end of the tube. So I'm going to take an angle, and if you have an Apogee sanding tee, um, you can just stick it along the tube like this. Take a pencil. So here's my top line right here. I hope you can see this. And I'm just going to take that line. Oops, it's moving on me. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so there's my line going all the way up to the front of the tube. Okay, so that's it for this step. So again, put this aside, let it dry completely, um, and then we'll go to the next video.